Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant and a very warm welcome back to Aviation News Weekly or Aviation News Recap. I still don't have a name for this series, but for those that don't know, it's long form aviation news content covering a host of topics that didn't get their own video. Delta feature in today's proceedings alongside Jetstar from Australia and Air New Zealand. So stay tuned. First though, let's head to Delta, who announced an expansion of their services for 2023, specifically the summer season, with the announcement of new routes across their transatlantic market. A total of 8% more available seats will be on offer compared to the 2022 summer season, with specifically new and also returning services resuming from destinations in the United States. Starting off at New York JFK, they'll see a Geneva flight begin on April 10, 2023, alongside London Gatwick. What I should mention is all these dates are for the 2023 calendar year. Meanwhile, Berlin will continue from May 25. Rome's capacity will also see an increase during that summer season. Atlanta, meanwhile, will see a three times weekly service to Dusseldorf from May 9th, a five times weekly to Edinburgh from May 25th, and finally a three times weekly to Stuttgart from March 26th, so a little bit earlier than the rest. Los Angeles will also be seeing Paris beginning on May the 8th, a very important service, and London Heathrow starting on March 25th. Interestingly enough, the last service mentioned there being London Heathrow hasn't been operational since 2015, which can be said for several of the routes that are restarting and or launching. Most of all had some notable absences from the Delta network, pandemic or not. I'm using Brilliant to stay sharp in certain areas that can benefit me daily, while also harnessing areas I've always been a little weaker at understanding. Brilliant's scientific thinking course offers a fun yet informative minigame section, allowing you to click the correct answer based on a visual presented on the screen. Through the visuals that Brilliant provides, I've found myself being able to easier comprehend things over, say, a formal textbook, meaning I don't have to spend, say, the years at college to get a basic understanding of a topic that is purely for fun. The end schools are hugely beneficial, so if I need scientific thinking for problem solving and or more, I have a more comprehensive grasp now on the matter. Brilliant is outstanding, and there's so much on the platform, from science to mathematics to problem solving, and its hands-on approach will guarantee better results. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash DJ's Aviation or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you watching will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Moving along to our next topic, which centers around changes at Jetstar. Jetstar is, of course, part of the Qantas group, which has seen probably some of its lowest points in recent years, and calls have come left, right, and center for the board to be adjusted. Now, the Qantas group has named Stephanie Tully as the new chief executive officer of the low-cost carrier Qantas, with the new executive to take the reins by the end of the year as the outgoing CEO Gareth Edwards departs and steps down from his role. Qantas's CEO Alan Joyce said these appointments come at an important time. The team is working incredibly hard to overcome challenges facing the whole industry as it gets back on its feet, and the data shows we're almost there. Despite these comments, and of course changes we're witnessing at the low-cost brand Jetstar, the biggest call at the moment is still for the removal of Alan Joyce from the head of Qantas following years of dragging the brand's image down to nowhere, and of course making key decisions that have negatively impacted the business, the people, and the customers. It is widely considered nowadays a joke in Australia, something that, as the spirit of Australia, is incredibly saddening and also concerning. Moving back to Stephanie, though, at Jetstar, she will lead the way forward with the continued recovery of the Australian aviation sector and will be overseeing key decisions moving forward as Jetstar looks to develop with new aircraft acquisitions, new routes and much much more on the horizon and it's exciting times for Jetstar. Over in New Zealand with our final topic of the day, we have flag carrier Air New Zealand, who experienced, no doubt, some of the most challenging and demanding points throughout the pandemic, with those massively extended lockdowns that essentially destroyed the aviation space. 
However, as borders begin to reopen and New Zealand can spread its wings and those citizens that were trapped inside or trapped outside away from family are now finally able to leave and or return, but I think do so with the confidence that the likelihood of borders slamming shut again is very low. This has resulted in Air New Zealand seeing a robust sales for the next couple of months as more and more people jump on board their flights. More aircraft also return to their operations. And in addition to that, the airline resumes key services while also launching new ones, notably the recent Auckland to New York JFK flight that has received quite the fanfare at being one of their longest flights that they've ever operated. What are your thoughts on the latest at the aviation industry, whether it be discussions surrounding Delta's transatlantic summer expansion for the next calendar year's summer season, or potentially changes at the board level for Jetstar? Of course, Jetstar being a part of the Qantas group, but still no movement, but still no movement with Alan Joyce, who still remains the Qantas CEO. Or maybe you have some thoughts on the brilliant recovery we're seeing over in New Zealand with none other than the flag carrier, Air New Zealand. You can leave your thoughts down below in the comments, but to the Flash Cuban, got to cast with B, Daniel Elliott, Leslie Austin, Nine, Will Jaden, Alwa Lead, Neil Don Stefan, and Jam, thanks for being cabin crew members. Your support is greatly appreciated, and I do very much appreciate the support on a continued basis. Do take care, do be safe, and I'll see you next time.